is everybody today? We are finishing off. This was wall epoxy, wood grain pattern troweled. We um, troweled this on top of an existing sample we had with colors down, and we taped off all our grout lines. As you can see, we taped them off, and that's why when we peeled them after troweling our wall epoxy, it exposed those grout lines. Um, so, and they're pretty wide, thick. Not, not necessarily my favorite. I liked doing stuff a little cleaner and smaller lines, but it was a fun door we did in a class, so here goes nothing. And I am pouring a clear over the top of it. Save a tiny bit of this for another little fun sample piece I'm doing where I'm showing you guys I'm doing some test samples for a pecky cypress um, butcher block I'm going to make and I want to kind of see what it looks like sealed up. So we're going to start out by just pouring this clear and as you notice it brings back all the color. If you notice how dark those grains are that's because I troweled uh, with, a, with a wood grain tool that actually gives texture to the epoxy because our wall epoxy actually is kind of a non-sag formula of product. Um, really, really fun to play with. So it'll kind of stay whatever shape you trowel it out to. And so we troweled this down, um, sprayed all our colors on top, and then I scraped kind of back across the top. And as you see, we have black epoxy as the base. So then when you scrape back off all those colors just off the tops of the ridges, it exposes all those kind of black wood grain patterns. So it's just a real cheap, easy way to do a wood grain. No, this is not a deep pour. This is a pretty thin countertop pour right here. So, and it's actually wall epoxy, and now I'm just going over it just to seal it up with a countertop product. Just, this would be something you could do on an actual countertop or a fun bar top or something. How is everyone today? Everybody have a good weekend? I'm about to try to polish our wall epoxy, so I hope you guys love this. I think our wall is going to be beautiful. You guys all have a good weekend. Hope you guys all did something fun and you're a blessing to somebody else. I'm going to get my little boy and bring him back so maybe I'll have my awesome little boy in our live app this afternoon. Got to see my cute little girl. Now you get to see my awesome little man. I say little man. He's bigger than me and he's like 11 years old. Actually, I am wrong. He just turned 12. Steals all my shoes. Okay, there we are. There we go. And simple, simple. Very simple. Now, we have a lot of, we could do nothing from here. We could leave it set, and a lot of it, we could torch it right now. But a lot of people are too quick to the torch. You, and you can torch right now to um, pop air bubbles. But sometimes what I like to do is let the epoxy on a colder temperature really self-level and work out itself out on its own, let those air bubbles come to the top. And then I'll torch, but I'll torch in about 15 minutes usually on jobs. Um, and then you're not, um, you're not curing the product prematurely, so let it kind of do its own thing. Let some of the air naturally rise up out of it, and you'll just get torch a little bit later, lighter, maybe twice, and you're going to get a way smoother, more crystal clear. This should be a sheet of glass when we finish it. So without, should we show them this door? Oh, you know what? You know what, guys? I sanded this corner of this door. This is, the, this is a wall epoxy as well, and I'll grab a rag and some alcohol to kind of show you guys what we're trying to get out of this. Um, basically, I... What the heck, guys? What the heck, Jorge? Here we go. Alcohol. So we um, troweled this, and then I took a V-notch trowel, and I just kept troweling and scraping in and spraying different colors and scraping new colors in, and I kind of layered it. So then when you sand it, it exposed all, all these different colors. But right now, as you, there it is. There's the wet look. So as you see, after we sand it, you get a totally different look as it cuts it open and opens it up, kind of like a geode versus where it's just troweled down and sitting there. So I don't know, you guys like that? I think I'm gonna finish sanding this out and polishing it. This would be like a really neat, just a shower. Obviously I picked crazy colors because I'm dyslexic and have, have an, art, an art issue. So you guys can pick the colors you want me to do later. Um, yeah, so I troweled wall epoxy on there, and then I just kept, and I had a color in the base that was this red, burgundy color, um, and then I just kept spraying all our accents on top. So now as I sand through it, it's exposing all those different layers and striations, so, and it gives you the kind of wood grain. It never looks nice on top, but after you sand through it all, it really gives you the differentiation. As you see, it's drying right now, so you don't see it, but when we pour a clear, or if I just polish it, I can polish it right up to a 5,000 like this, and if you guys want, I'll just polish this right now instead of our wall. 
This will be a very easy project we'll work on really quickly right now. If anybody wants to learn how to polish. Polish, nail. I can't ever say polish without thinking of the Lego movie. Nail, polish, remover. Did anybody ever see Lego movie? Am I the only person that likes stupid stuff? What'd y'all do this weekend? Anybody do something that was a blessing to someone? Or fun? This is my um, box I had for COVID, and it's still brand new and unopened. So, But I definitely do believe in sanding dust, dust so I like to protect myself. All right. Do you want me to hold that way put it on? Yeah. How are you guys? I hope I don't mess this up and it looks beautiful and I am going to do my best polishing this and usually this is probably one of my favorite things out of all the things in epoxy I would say polishing epoxy is one of the most rewarding and beautiful jobs to do it takes a minute but it's very fun Okay, so I know I'm getting, being boring and you guys are just watching me sand, but what's happening is we troweled wall epoxy to this whole thing, and it's like peanut butter. And we troweled it down with this base burgundy color. And it was just a burgundy door, flat, and we're gonna do a long-term video on this, show you the whole process. And on top of that, on top of that um, burgundy color, we just kept spraying colors and doing a V-notch and scraping all our other colors in. So it pushed them underneath the surface so that when we come back and back sand, it exposes all the striations, but then as we polish, we can get a really crazy, like petrified wood look. So what we're going for here is a really nice piece of petrified wood. Yeah. It should be polished better than a piece of granite. What grit did you use? This is um, 80, I believe, um, on a buffer, and that's very aggressive. So I'm gonna have to kind of sand back on this.
I'm coming right back with my other tool. And now this tool has a HEPA vac on it, meaning it captures most of the very small particulates. But first, I'm going to leaf blow our camera. There we go. And. If you have a bunch of bubbles and it's still being poured, um, if they're really small bubbles, um, you might have mixed a little quickly. So just take your time, let it kind of set, um, and the air should come to the top. Um, and then lightly torch them or spray alcohol to pop them. Do not mix the two. Definitely torch first, spray alcohol second if you're going to mix the two. Um, um, or just torch if you don't have alcohol to spray, and that, that'll work very adequately. Um, the other thing, if they've already cured, you're going to need to sand back through. Um, and it's going to create a lot of white dust wherever you cut a bubble off. Um, if you didn't get to torching it on time. Um, so when you sand it off, just make sure you clean those out and then you can pour a clear back over the top and usually it takes care of 90% of that. So definitely call our office and you can talk to them about it and show them pictures and things like that are frustrating, but definitely there's some easy fixes out there. So get in touch with us and we'll work through that with you. And I am running back. This is a big step up here. This is all the way to 400 grit. So. <laughs> Oh, that's going to be pretty. I really basically just want to really continue to flatten this piece and really expose all those different grains and just get it very smooth. And all of a sudden you're going to start seeing more and more polish come out of this piece and more and more shine. And once we hit like 5,000, it should be a very shiny, very polished piece. That's going to be beautiful through there. Do most of your work with this first grit, so it might seem slow trying to get across this door. But really make sure you're ad adequately cutting every area a few times so you don't have any little places that were missed. It's good to overlap a few different runs and, it'll, and just keep your sander very flat the whole time um, and keep kind of steady pressure, steady back and forth movement. Let the sandpaper itself cut so don't apply any additional like extra pressure. Um, you just you definitely want to get all those um, striations from any of the real coarse, more aggressive pads out before moving on to your next grit. So I'll kind of overlap almost everything I do here just to make sure there's no little areas left behind. I'm not an expert sander. Polishing and sanding is probably something I'm, I'm still learning and learning a lot of little tricks that are kind of helpful. How is everybody today? Welcome, welcome, and happy Monday. I hope you guys had a good enough weekend where you feel like you can crush it this week and have an awesome week. You know, wet sanding is a great option if you don't have something that pulls so much dust like this HEPAVAC. Um, it will keep dust down. And also, if you're sanding fresh or epoxy, something that was poured more freshly, that maybe not a full cure, 
Um, if, you know, sometimes you're um, starting to sand something that's pretty fresh and it starts gumming it up, put water on it, keeps it cool and allows it to cut really well. So that is an option, just throws a lot of water around. So I try to dry sand if I can vac. But like I say, like usually I like to use something with a really good vac on it or wet sanding is a great option, so. <laughs> I like to do all my cutting in this very first pass. So if you move a little too quickly over it, it's really frustrating when you get all the way, you go from 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 to 3,000, 5,000, and all, you start seeing it shine and you realize, man, I didn't work enough with my coarser grit. And you have to go right back to square one, go back, cut enough with the coarse grit. So it's always good to make an extra pass over this or something back when you're down here in these grits. You're not burning through anything yet, so you may as well get it cut really smooth. And that's actually quite a step up going from the, um, the 80 grit that I had all the way to 400. That's why I'm kind of going over the every single area twice. I'm really trying to cut through all those first striations. But I don't know if you guys can see, but I think this is going to look very beautiful. It's a really dull color right now, but as soon as we kind of finalize it and start hitting those um, higher grits, this should start really polishing. Look, I want it to be about polished like granite, but really have that shine like petrified wood or something that's been polished. clear alcohol because often that's kind of what you really want to see and this will kind of tell you what we'll get when we polish it out so whatever we see now should be very similar to our polished look so when we spray it with water so here we are here goes maybe nothing I think it's gonna be beautiful though so this is what we're trying to polish till we see this I don't know y'all think that's gonna be good can you guys see the, I don't know if you, can you guys see, because this is just incredible. This is, this is hotter than any of your moms right here. Oh, Hell yeah. So that is what we're trying to polish this wall epoxy that we did this kind of petrified wood grain pattern on until we get that shine. But I want it to be a natural sunshine, not from pouring something over it, not from spraying it. I want to polish that shine right out of it. This, you could do this on a backsplash, in a shower, an accent wall, just about anywhere. Say what? Oh, yes. Clean the lens? Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm so dirty. I'm such a dirty dude. Now, see, the shine's coming off of it right now because it's drying out. Not really a problem at all, but evidently you can see that pretty well. So now I'm going to try something kind of funny. Well, probably not funny to you guys, but... I'm gonna, I like to try stupid crap that may or may not work, but I do have, for my drywall sanding head, some 400 grit foam back pads that I'm gonna throw on here. And usually, the softness of a foam back pad will kinda give you, um, it'll kinda contour the piece more than a rigid non-foam back pad. So this usually, after you run like a really coarse pad, this will kinda even everything out really well, so. 
Oh yeah. You can't ever polish quite with something this, like this, but as you see, it's surely going through the grips a lot faster and more effectively um, because of the, how this foam back pad works. It'll really start smoothing out this epoxy better than almost anything. But now I'll be able to pick up with a thousand grit. If it doesn't quite work, I might pick it back down to 600 or something for a minute, but that's gonna be beautiful. That's gonna be. It's gonna be a happy art right there. Now, you know what? I should wear a mask, guys. I'm the first one to know that, and first one to not do it. I was wrong, and you guys are right. How'd you like that? I keep going back and forth. Now I'm using holes in my HEPA filter paper, so it's a little safer. But I should have been wearing a mask when I sanded. You should always wear a mask. Here's 1,000 grit. Now this won't quite start showing a shine yet, but this will be very, very, very flat if we get this smooth here. So It'll be extremely smooth to the touch. Like if you were to finish this out in countertops, most customers love the way this feels at 1,000 better than almost anything else. Where are you all watching from today? We're in Grand Junction, Colorado, which is on the western side, and this is our main shop, right where we teach our classes and everything. So um, we do all our manufacturing out of Wisconsin and shipping, and um, in all of our training and our um, headquarters are located right here in Grand Junction, Colorado. City. Man, I sure hope you guys are enjoying ramen. That's the best place to go for ramen, New York City. Thank you. I've had ramen at three places there, I believe. So what I, I don't know why. Every time I go there, I just want to eat ramen. We don't, probably because we have trashy restaurants here. We have a very few very good ones. They're the only places I eat. That's why I love traveling, probably half of it is just for the better food when I leave town. As I can see guys, I am not effectively getting below some of those cuts that I need to, so I am going back to my 600. I'm seeing a little bit of swirls in here. Um, so that's this is still pretty fine, but obviously I do still need to run this piece to get any of the scratches from that rotary buffer out. You get a lot of work done fast with it, but then you do have to cut the, the or polish out the 
the cuts and the striations from that coarser paper. I was just hoping I wouldn't have to do this too much, but I'd rather do it now than in a minute. blessed with today. You can think of a blessing, think of something unique that you wouldn't normally say. Like a one letter word. What you're the most grateful for. I'd say grace. Oh, that's getting really pretty there, guys. few sanding swirls right here. You can kind of, I don't know if you guys see the reflection, but usually that's where you catch those sanding swirls is in that reflection and you see those scraping striations across here from just a little too coarse of paper. And it's not an issue, I just kind of rushed that first pass. I like to prove to you guys that I'm not always perfect. Almost. Not quite. That's a joke. And remember, sometimes just throwing a fresh disc of paper on there, you don't want to be wasting them, but sometimes throwing a fresh disc on there and going through two or something in an area, three, it's going to save you a ton of time. So I'm probably going to kind of cut this little box out here and switch pads. And I'll probably even do a once over with it one more time with another fresh pad. So I'm kind of, I don't mind going through a few pads if it really gets the surface sanded faster or more effectively. So. I really, really don't want any of those cuts in there. Oh, that's, I don't know if you can see that, but the color, I love when it starts actually polishing. And you start seeing that beautiful color start coming back through, guys. That is that is what we're looking for. And that, that, I can't believe it. That's only 600, which is crazy, because we're going to go all the way to 5,000. see this polish out, I think you're going to like it. If you're watching from home, sit down because you're going to get a lady boner. It's going to be. I love when this stuff polishes. This usually looks better than Venetian or even marble. done with this cut then we should start being able to get onto something where it's going to be a little more visually appealing what's your guys' favorite 80s movie favorite 80s movie should even do 90s. I'm trying to watch old fun movies with my kids and I'm trying to think of old stuff like the Goonies and, and whatnot. So you 
you can only watch Step Brothers with your kids so many times before you start feeling guilty for letting them see that crap. I miss all the old Chris Farley movies. Black Sheep and Tommy Boy. Back when Hollywood actually made funny movies. All right, we're about, uh, I'm gonna blow it off. All right. Stepping up to the thousand grit, guys. I'm hoping we really start seeing something now. grid is right on the cusp where you can almost start seeing your your shimmer and your glittery flex and your reflective stuff start showing again but usually you won't really see it pop till you step up to like 3,000 for that so we'll see what we get though top epoxy wall epoxy that now we're just polishing out. I troweled it down with a red base coat and then I sprayed a lot of accents into the top of this um, and kind of scraped them with a v-notch trowel to create a wood graining effect and instead of just pouring it clear to get it all shiny um, over the top, a clear of our countertop product, what I'd rather do is just really polish this because you can get a really nice like almost petrified wood look out of this. So. So I think this will probably be preferred to actually polish when you can. It's a little more work, but and thank you guys for being patient for the three of you that want to see how to do this. And I think it's one of those probably boring to watch things, but it's so fun and satisfying to do. And it's extremely satisfying once you understand what you're going to get out of it. Um, each step actually becomes more a little more um, fun to you because you know you're going to, if you do the steps, you're your kind of um, intermittent steps correctly, you know you're gonna get that polish real beautiful, so. 
We'll see what we get out of 2000 now. I wiped it down. The reason I wiped it down so well is I don't want any of those old lower grit sanding particles swirling around. Now I'm getting to 2000, that's a pretty fine grit. And, and you want to really clean as you step up in grits because um, those chunks sit there and they'll just keep pushing around and creating more and more swirls. And, and around it's all polished, but the, the polishing effect with that large swirl really accents that piece of sand swirling around on there. So just sometimes if you can't get a really good polish, just clean better and don't contaminate your sanding discs. And a lot of times your hands will feel things that you never saw. So now this is three or 2000 rather, 2000. Now this should actually start with a little bit of a shine shine, like a reflective, shimmery, metallic shine, a little bit. It won't be crazy because it's still only 2,000, but man, this is prepping it for that 3,000 or 5,000. That's when you really start seeing things shine the way they should. If you ever are having a hard time and it's getting gummy and your pads are gumming up and you're blowing through pads too fast, you can always shut your back off, make sure you have a sanding disc that doesn't have holes in it, like a wet dry pad, and then just start sanding with water, and sometimes that'll clean it up a whole lot better than what you were doing before. Okay, that's... We're getting there, we're getting there. Yeah, can you guys start seeing? I don't know if you guys can see, but you kind of see that faint polish starting. And remember, we talked about the foam-backed pad. That's why the next one's foam-backed, and that's, that, with all the pads, once you go to foam, it's gonna sand and, and polish much smoother. But you really wanna do all your profiling cutting with something without sand on it, without foam on the back, rather because you want it really rigid until you're trying to polish because a rigid pad will cut your high spots off and it'll avoid sanding more out of your lows. Whereas if you have too flexible of a pad, if you have a low spot, it still dips down and sands it more and the high spot, it'll go over it and not really cut it off. So I try to keep a really rigid pad, you know, a lot more rigid um, disc with no foaming or backing or anything on all my coarse grits. And then I'll go to more foam once I get past like 2,000 or something. Because all the highs should be cut off by now if you did your job. Um, if you had to step back down, it'd be because you missed something. Okay, here goes nothing with that 3,000 about. This is the sound of the police. Ooh, ooh. Oh, we have this fight. We don't have to. Here we go, guys. This now this has foam on it, and that's how it's getting that really perfect shine. Can you see that reflection popping? Remember how dull this just was a minute ago, guys. Get that border cut in first, and then keep working in the field. Remember, this is a process, take time. I'm holding real steady pressure and I'm just polishing it out, working slowly across my area. I don't mind if I have to come back and make another pass or overlap something. This is all for beauty. This should be one of the more beautiful passes.
remember this could be walls, showers, anything. If you want to really polish something that you troweled really randomly or to make a really cool pattern, you can always just sand it back flat and then start polishing it. Same way you'd get a scratch out, out of a countertop or anything else. just like the movie, right? And then here, this pad's a little too small, but you guys aren't watching this because I'll keep it really flat. You guys will have no clue I put too small of a pad on the sander. Same 3,000, or 5,000 rather, same 5,000 grit pad, and as you can see, we're finally getting shiny and shiny, getting our shine on. swap it out to a fresh one just in case there's anything gummy to get off the top but often this does nothing sometimes it really is a final shine so we'll see if you if you have wet spots um, in your epoxy that's definitely from being unmixed or or sometimes what has happened to me is I mix really adequately on my bucket but I don't get the bottom or the sides of the container. And that's why we switch containers here, is it really cut down on that. So I usually mix for about three to five minutes on my first pail, switch it into a second pail, mix for three to five minutes more. And that, that second mix, new stick, new bucket, really cuts down on that. And that's so frustrating. Call our office, a lot of times you can pour and just mix it adequately over the top, but definitely call us and we'll help you through that. It happens to a lot of people the first time. All right, final polish, see if this is it. You guys be the judge and just tell me when to stop. Don't be judgy. No, you don't. Y'all be judgy if you want. Oh, that Caribbean is beautiful, guys. Keep that head moving so you don't build up any too much heat in any one spot. So always when you're buffing, keep that head moving constantly. And just keep overlapping your passes and your strokes so you hit everything a few times. Um, but like I say, never let it set or it'll, it'll immediately build up heat. So if you have a spot you're trying to work, work the entire area around it and blend that area in. All right. I think that's all she wrote for this door. That's that's beautiful. If you guys don't like it, again, your moms are going to be calling for it anyway, so it doesn't really hurt my feelings. I'll take it out here into some light and put it up. Not the worst thing I ever did, with a little bit of help from you guys. 
think you can really, man, all the colors. Now, as you can see, that's just from spraying different colors and scraping the colors in. It looked like a big gooey piece of baby poo. We trowel it off and there you go. My mom asked how much. <laughs> Say what? My mom asked how much. You know what, for you, for free. Anything that Michael or Michael's family wants, they can have anything for free here. Michael's an amazing person. No, 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 so. someone asked that. Oh, I thought Michael's mom asked. If somebody else, if my, Michael's mom wants something, that's always free. If your mom wants it, it's always free as well, whoever you are. But if you want it, all you have to do is donate to one of our three, and now I think four, we have another African mission um, going where we're building schools and whatnot. Um, backpack program right here in the US, which I'm a big fan of. Um, if you donate to anything like that, we'll clean up all your edges and ship these out to you. And all you have to do is pay shipping, So, but we just request that you do donate something. Um, whatever you think is significant, whatever it is, if it's a dollar and that's a lot to you, or some people have given a few thousand dollars for these doors. So um, they make really nice desktops and whatnot, um, and we can clean them up for you, but we do sell everything. All we ask you to do is um, to donate to some of the organizations. If you wanna know what some of them are, you can call our office too. Um, but, but definitely clean drinking water, schools. Um, we just got back, um, my kids actually got to go on one mission trip. They went and that, we paid out of our personal pocket for that completely, but, but you guys were able to donate and um, they brought a whole bunch of shoes down to some kids in El Salvador at an orphanage there. And thanks to you guys, we were able to get, bring something like, I think it's like 12 or 14 boxes of shoes, which is just amazing. A bunch of kids that had never had shoes before. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had an amazing weekend. And remember guys, this is Monday. We did our weekend, so we are not pansies today. So go crush it, make your boss or your coworkers. You know what, if you hate your boss, F that dude or woman or whoever they are. But you know what you should do? Look out for your coworkers and go be a team. Take care of each other today and just see how well um, of a week you can create for yourself. Have an awesome weekend or week. Um, we'll probably be live again this afternoon. Hopefully I have my super cute little, little bigger boy kill a pedophile before I see you all or the, until they release that Epstein's list. So have a good one, guys. Talk to you soon. I really like polishing wall epoxy. I can't wait to do this to the whole wall. Even the glitter popped back out.